How can delusion be sincere? The individual is in a state of fragmentation mentally due to the physiological process of the post-hypnotic trance or the trance defense. There is emotional dissociation as a result of deprivation of dependency needs during the vital stage of the dependency bridge and reinforced by ongoing messaging of trauma events, which can both be emotional and physical as established. Further established is the now vulnerable and damaged sense of self, and with it, the boundary issues accompanying the shame you'll find. Codependency is up and running, a state of hyper-compliancy, the result of stuck immobility response, often called Stockholm Syndrome, is operating. Suggestibility is now the psychological state. Immobility occurs when the organism has passed through the possibility of perceived escape from perceived threat of death and enters into a state of numbness and dissociation. As said before, this is unconsciously permanent until there is resolution from the traumatic protective mechanisms produced by the physiology to ensure survival. Let's take the classic example from our historic social trend, generalized, yes, the universal domestic violence dynamic. Again, to generalize, the husband is the alcoholic tyrant, the wife the codependent victim. Friday night, he comes home drunk and beats his wife to a pulp again. He is unable to control his rage and cannot contain the impulse to take his reve revenge out on her. He has a reason why this is a feeling of revenge while the violence in him is happening, and to her, he does. It was the other guy looking at her. He is sure of it. When he awakens in the morning and is shaking off his hangover, the voices in his head keep telling him he is so right. It's her fault. That damn dress is far too provocative, and she must know. She must know it. She is just pretending to be dumb to it. And a little further surge of rage wells up as he pulls on his pants and tells himself, God damn, she deserved it. She really did, though. But as the day goes by and the alcohol begins to wear off in his system, his resolve starts to waver. Maybe this takes a day or two. He hasn't come home yet, as he really does have to punish her, determined for her to see just how right he is in being so hurt and outraged and angry. It's all her fault. She made him feel that way. And that makes him, you know, even more mad. If only she would stop causing him to feel this way. Damn her. But starting to soften, he, he tries to stay mad, reassuring himself how wrong she is. Just wrong. And after all, my pain is special. No one else had those things happen when they were kids as bad as I did. I, I have a right to to be this way. It's not fair, he tells himself. But that resolve is weakening as the hours go by. Suddenly he thinks of a memory with her or hears that song on the truck radio. Their song, wanting, wells up in his heart. He can only love her. My God, how he loves and needs her. Two nights later now he is blazing to the flower store for her favorite red roses and just to make sure this mo moment extra, the special one he arrives at their front door, he'll have takeout with him just so she won't have to cook. For now she needs to know he feels just how much he appreciates her and would die without her cooking. He arrives at the door and despite her bruised black and blue body, she wobbles to his arms and collapses into everything familiar, hugging him deeply back. Oh, yes, she accepts his apology. Despite the open suitcase, 
that will soon return to the closet. Now it was half full anyway, easy to put everything back, and some strange relief in doing so. Something feels so safe in their world together, for nothing could ever make her feel so safe as their secret memories of this and that, their secret moments. She's so much better off than Thelma, who now sells herself on the street. She has somebody, and hey, it's not that bad. At least he apologizes and pays some of the bills. And it, his chest and that body. Why should she ask for anything more? Oh, that moment of safety when all the world is known and familiar. I am so lucky and so in love, she reminds herself. After that heated love-making session, that's all we needed, just to be close again. That burning desire. Over the next week or so, there is a dialogue she is having within herself that his promises never to hurt her again make her feel confident, you know, special even. She has a guy who can admit he is wrong when he is wrong. She really knows he means it this time when he whispers into her ear that he promises he will never hurt her again. She so believes him. I mean, after all, they really know each other they have been married almost 10 years now and who could know him better than her and that poor poor baby he was so mistreated by his daddy by his exes everyone's been so unfair to him you know, I have to be there for him I can save him but but I'm the only one you know, I understand him you know, I'm special of course he will change. Of course he will never beat me again. A few weeks later, she puts out a special dress for the next barbecue, wanting his attention and secretly planning for a special seduction for him tonight. Extra time in front of the mirror, checking the belt, the lipstick, the shoes. She lays on the couch with a split lip the next morning, and swollen, and I could even say stolen eyes, sobbing to herself and in despair. All she wanted was his pleasure. She was sure he could not resist her, that he would not be looking at all the other redheads. When she finally pulled him aside and asked him why, why is he flirting like that, she believed with all her might that he would grab her romantically, press his lips to hers, reassure her, be aroused by her, drag her home and into bed, that he would have just been fair. But the beating, the beating, it happened again. Why? It has to be her fault, a tiny voice is saying inside. They w she will have to try harder. It's got to be up to her. But she says this only after cursing him to herself for a few hours. And she did remember screaming at him how much she hated him last night. During it all and in front of all the other guys. She, she knows she, she can never measure up with them too somehow. She always has this nagging feeling of just not being cool enough. Or beautiful enough around them, too. Did I really throw the lawn chair into the side of his truck in front of everybody? How can I face them all again? When we got home, I broke things in a rage, too. God, he makes me mad. You know, it's so unfair. But maybe that was wrong. I lost control. I'm so ashamed. Oh, God, what should I do? She wonders. As that familiar despair starts to swirl, as suddenly she realizes the truck is driving in the driveway. This may be a crude and tired example of our social story. I could use thousands of different examples 
with father, son, mother, daughter, wife, husband, neighbor, neighbor, subject, ruler, with a thousand variations of subtleties. The point is that while one is in an unresolved trauma response or post-hypnotic trance, one is in a state of delusion. This delusion is caused by the distortion of perspective that is psychological that I have been describing in all these presentations regarding the dangers of trauma left unresolved. What needs to be heard and understood is that this psychological delusion that results in skewed emotional perspective and response is felt by every individual, both tyrant and victim, as the most utter expression of sincerity. The internal voices of both individuals, the tyrant and the victim, tell them equally their perspective and their responses are an accurate reading of reality and that they are always right while the other is always wrong. The more skewed, in fact, the more sincere the delusion. This is sincere delusion, for it really will be different next time. Denial itself is the greatest threat to our species. What is behind this mental addiction we call denial? Should we say that denial itself is another word for obsession? Consider the following synonyms regarding obsession. Fixation, ruling, consuming passion, mania, idée fixée, compulsion, preoccupation, infatuation, addiction, fetish, craze, phobia, complex, neurosis. Now take for a moment an entire society that after generations have just started to shake off the shock of collective denial regarding the word democracy and all that word implied to so, so many for so, so long. Or going deeper, what about a civilization hypnotized into worshiping as heroes, the emperors of the ages, who in fact are nothing more than sociopathic mass murderers, as is obvious to all free thinkers now at this time. We have all been deluded by the same old tricks and tricksters, wizards and perpetrators, those we are told to call our masters, our kings and queens, our priests, our governments, our world leaders, our bankers, our media and corporate heads since the beginning of time. And yet, how many still live in this sincere delusion that we need lords to obey? How is it possible that our lives can find destiny in adjectives, nouns, and means, such as hope, change, or terror? What does it take for us as a species to see deception and delusion when it stares us in the face? If we claim we are the most intelligent species on Earth, which we in the Western world most certainly do, then how is it possible we can be fooled by any one simple lie, let alone fall for the lies of the ages. How is it possible that we can believe that any war is in our best interest, or that Wall Street is necessary for the survival of our species somehow, or that we need politics and science to organize ourselves socially? Why is it that when our entire civilization and all its institutions is in fact built on crime. We see crime in everything but ourselves, blaming those very nouns and adjectives that are only objectified projections of our mass insanity. And who is responsible for our mass delusion? Us or them? Is there a difference between the two? I think not. In this hierarchy of crime that we do call our civilization, we must realize that collusion with it is mass delusion afflicting the psyche of mankind. As the saying goes, 
The road to hell is paved with good intentions, and oh, the sincerity of it all. Indeed, for all sincere delusion will have itself convinced with only righteous justifications. Whether empires clash or the couple in the trailer park, what drives the clash is delusion itself. Narcissus stares at his reflection as Echo weeps to the wind. For is it not that little purple flower, the fragrance of sincerity? The hardest truth of all here is that all along, sincerity may have had nothing to do with honesty. For one look at our collective history will tell us that it has not.